Hello, Facebook Live. Hi, YouTube. Pastor Cheryl Curry at Silent Ministries Christian Center. Welcome back. Amen. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Amen. We're yet in the series. We're yet in the series kept by his goodness. Kept by his goodness. Amen. And we're on the word, the valley experience. The valley experience. Amen. Today we're talking about part three of the valley experience. Amen. What about that? Now let me review for you very briefly, amen. Uh, we've been talking from uh, Psalms chapter, Psalm chapter 23, verses 1 through 4. The word of God there says, the Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. I have everything I need. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Help me, Jesus. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We talked about valleys. Uh huh. I want to read one more scripture for you here, and that's 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 28, in IV version. It says there, God said, because the Syrians think that I am only the God of the hills and that I am not the God of the valleys. I'm going to give you victory over this huge army so everyone will know that I am the Lord. Amen? Let's look at what we know about valleys. What we know about valleys. We found out, amen, in this word, the valley experience, which is on YouTube at Cheryl Curry, S-H-E-R-Y-L, C-U-R-R-Y, C-U-R-R-Y, Cheryl Curry, YouTube. Put the name of the browser, amen, and you can uh, uh, get this word, amen. What we know about valleys, what we know about valleys, valleys, number one, are a part of life. Valleys are a part of life, amen. And number two, valleys happen to everybody. Valleys happen to everybody, uh-huh. And another thing we know about valleys is that valleys are unpredictable. Valleys are unpredictable. Uh-huh. And so we, we said even last week, we said uh, what can we expect? Valleys and what we can expect. Amen? We talked about uh, actually uh, two different uh, types of valleys. We talked about the Valley of Sedem, which is the Valley of Failure. And we talked about the valley of Eskal, which is the valley of fear, the valley of fear, amen? And so today we want to talk about um, another valley, the third valley, and that's called the valley of Elia. The valley of Elia. Mm -hmm. The valley of Elia is in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Mm -hmm. And you're going to go through this valley probably many times in your life in a similar way, uh-huh. This is a well-known valley because uh, this is where a little boy named Daniel met the giant named Goliath, amen? You know the story, you know the story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. David met Goliath mm -hmm, in the Valley of Elia. Mm -hmm. The Philistines and the Israelites we're in the Valley of Elia, and they were in position for battle. This is not on your outline, but the reference is 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 2 through 4, and then verse 11. The Word of God there says, Saul and the Israelites camped in the Valley of Elia, and they drew up a battle plan to fight the Philistines. Hmm? The Philistines and the Israelites each stood their ground, shouting and taunting each other from opposite hills with the Valley of Elia between them. Mm -hmm. Now the Philistine army had a giant champion fighter, a giant champion fighter named Goliath who was about nine feet tall. When Saul and the Israelites saw this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. Mm -hmm. Now, David is just a shepherd boy, but he's not afraid. Uh -huh. 
David trusts God. He trusts God. David had been trusting God all of his life. All of his life. Uh huh. David wrote, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Hallelujah. In verse 32 of 1 Samuel 17, chapter 17, David says this. David says, don't worry about a thing. David says, don't worry about a thing. David told Saul, I'll go fight this Philistine. I'll go fight this Philistine. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the army is scared to take on this giant. You know, this giant comes down every day. He comes down every day. Mm -hmm. He provokes, he pokes fun at the Israelites. Uh -huh. The giant calls the Israelites a bunch of whips. A bunch of whips. Uh, the giant calls the Israelites weaklings. Uh -huh. uh, the giant said, um, you send out your best guys, Israel. I'm the best guy from the Philistines. We'll take, you, uh, we'll take each other on. And whoever wins, wins. And the battle is over. That person will then be the conqueror. Everybody is scared to pieces. Uh-huh. What is the Valley of Elia? Write this down. Elia, mm -hmm. uh -huh. Elia is the Valley of Conflict. The Valley of Elia, E-L-A-H. The Valley of Elia is the Valley of Conflict. Uh, this is when you're, you're, you're in a, the Valley of Elia when you're facing a, a giant challenge. Mm-hmm. In the Valley of Elias, somebody, you're facing a giant uh, conflict. Uh huh. You're facing a giant period. Mm -hmm. Somebody's in your face, and somebody's, uh, you've got opposition, you've got an opponent, okay? You've got conflict. You're in the Valley of Elia. Uh huh. You've got a challenge in an Elia that is the Valley of Conflict. Amen? Now, Mm -hmm. Well, you got to ask yourself, am I in the Valley of Elia? Am I in the Valley of Elia? Well, you may not be somebody in the Valley of the Shadow of Death. Uh -huh. uh, you may not be in Sedan. Mm -hmm. Or you, you may be in Eskal. Huh? Look with me at 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 3. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 3. That is in your outline. It says, the Philistines occupied one hill and the Israelites another, with the Valley of Elia between them, the Valley of Elia between them. Mm -hmm. Now, what about that? Now, let's, let's go here because there's something else that we're mentioning here too, another valley, because the Valley of Baca, B-A-C-A, -A. the Valley of Baca, B-A-C-A, is mentioned in Psalms 84. Okay, we're just looking at four of the many significant valleys in scriptures. Okay, in scripture. And so in Psalms 84, the word baka means weeping. In Psalms 84, the word baka means weeping. Amen, weeping. Mm -hmm. the baka comes from a Hebrew word, a Hebrew root word meaning weep, to weep. Amen. And the valley of baka somebody was, um, was a desert. The Valley of Baca, somebody was a desert. It was a desert. Amen. It was a desert. Amen. And um, the Valley of Baca, somebody was a was a dry, dusty, arid wasteland. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to go to Jerusalem, you had to go through the Valley of Baca to get there. You're in the Valley of Baca, somebody, when you're going through a dry time in your life. Ever been there? When you're going through a dry time in your life, I've been there myself before, when all your joy has dried up, when all your joy has dried up, maybe you're grieving, mm -hmm. maybe you're weeping in the valley of weeping, but just know that nothing grows in Baca, nothing grows in Baca, nothing is produced in Baca, there is no fruit in Baca, just tears. There's no fruit in the bucket, just tears. Uh -huh. In Psalms, 
In Psalm chapter 84, verses 5 through 6a, the word of God there says, Blessed are those whose strength comes from the Lord. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of, of springs. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. Now, all of a sudden, water is showing up here. Come on now, all of a sudden water is showing up here, okay? As they pass through this dry valley of Baca weeping, they make it a place of springs, uh-huh. And the autumn rains cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength, growing until each appears before God in Zion. Amen, I just went through verse seven. And so when you go into the valley of Baca, it's dry. Mm -hmm. You don't have any feelings anymore in the Valley of Baca. Uh, you don't feel close to God in the Valley of Baca. Mm -hmm. You don't feel close to anybody in the Valley of Baca. Mm -hmm. You're dried up. You have no emotion. You have no emotion. You're actually going through the motions. You're actually uh, just going through the motions. You're putting one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. There's no joy in your life because your joy is dried up. Mm -hmm. There's no energy in your life. Mm -hmm. It's dried up. You're depressed. You may be grieving. You may be weeping yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so maybe you are grieving a loss. And maybe just, you're just going through the valley of Baca. Amen? But God wants us, somebody, to be the kind of people that make the Valley of Baca a place of springs. Hmm? And so water comes when we show up. Water comes when we show up. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Those in the Valley of Baca go from strength to strength. Hmm? That's what God wants you to do. Amen? That's what God wants you to do your entire life. Go from strength to strength. Amen? And so God wants you to go in your entire life from one level of maturity to the next level of maturity. And then go to the next level of maturity. And then go to the next level of maturity. And then go to the next level of maturity. Level of maturity. Amen? Those who experience Baca grow from strength to strength. Uh-huh. Growing until they appear before God in Zion. Amen. Until you see Jesus. Mm -hmm. One day you're going to stand before God and God will say, I don't care about your clothes. And God will say, I don't care about your cash. Mm -hmm. But I do care about your character. I do care about your character, how you behave yourself. Mm -hmm. Did you grow from strength to strength, God will say, while you on the earth? Did you grow from strength to strength while you on the earth? Did you? Mm -hmm. When you were going through the different valleys, did you, did you work that out? Mm -hmm. When you were going through the valley of, of decisions and the, the valley of questions and the valley of confusion, mm -hmm. when you were going through the valley of trouble, when you were going through the valley of the shadow of death, what did you learn from all of that? God is saying, what did you learn from all of that? Mm -hmm. Did you grow from strength to strength? Are you understanding now that trouble only comes to make you strong? Trouble comes to mature you. To move you from one level of maturity to another level of maturity. If you ever want to know why trouble comes, that's why trouble comes. To move you from one level of maturity to the other level of maturity, another level of maturity. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so know this, somebody. God wants to know, did you grow from strength to strength? Did you keep growing until you appeared before, before me, before me, God, face to face? God says, I, my, my whole thing with you, people, is that you grow. 
Hmm? You know how the word of God says in this world you will have trouble? Trouble comes to usher in maturity, to bring you to another level. Mm hmm. Getting God good. Because it is possible, I believe this, I'm going to get off track just a minute, but it is possible, I believe, mm -hmm, to grow in God and get to a place where, where people in life don't bother you. Mm -hmm. What about that? Mm -hmm. Know somebody that faith turns a place without water into a place of spring. I said, faith turns a place without water, baka, dry, arid, desert land, into a place of springs. Huh? That's where you can find refreshment. Mm -hmm. That's where you find what God wants to do in your life. Uh huh. Even in the valley of grief, when you're weeping, God wants to use those tears to water a dry and unproductive waste place. Because how do you know that there are no there are no waste baskets, no trash cans in heaven? God doesn't waste anything. He even uses our tears. Amen? You know, uh, I read about a story. It's a story about William Booth. He was the founder of the Salvation Army. He still is the founder of the Salvation Army. Uh, and that began, and the Salvation Army began in England. And, and William Booth had sent a man here to the States, amen? And this man was sent to the United States. He was trying to actually reach people for the Lord. And this man kept saying, I've tried everything. I've tried, I've tried prayer. I've tried music. I've tried services. I've tried special attractions, but nobody is interested in hearing the good news in the United States. Huh? William Booth wrote back two words to this young man on a telegram. He said, try weeping. When you care about something enough that you weep about it, uh -huh, God moves in the action. Verse 6 of Psalms 84. Have you ever been there before? Mm -hmm. Psalms, chapter, Psalms 84, verse 6. The word of God there says, Blessed are those whose strength comes from the Lord as they pass through. Did you see that? Blessed are those whose strength comes from the Lord as they pass through. I stop right there. I, I stop there because you don't stay in the Valley of Baca. You don't stay in the Valley of Weeping. You don't stay there. Mm -hmm. As they pass through the Valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. What is Baca? The Valley of Baca, somebody, is the Valley of Grief. And the valley of barrenness. It's the valley of grief. It's the valley of barrenness. Uh huh. God is telling us that valleys are a part of life. Uh huh. Valleys happen to everybody. Valley is unpredictable. You will go through valleys in life. So don't be surprised about it. It's part of life. Uh huh. You've been through valleys in the past. And you're going to go through them again. That's life. That's life. Amen? When you're in, when you're in one of these valleys, the valley of uh, failure, the valley of fear, the valley of conflict, the valley of dryness, the valley of grief, the valley of trouble, what do you do? What do you do? Well, let's talk about what you need to remember in a valley. Let's talk about what you need to remember in a valley. Mm -hmm. Psalms chapter 23 says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. 
Hmm. Let's talk about three things that God wants you to remember in a valley. Number one, when you're in the valley, put this on your outline. Remember, I'm not alone. Remember that you're not alone. Make it personal, though. Put down on your paper, on your outline, remember, I'm not alone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God is with you. God is with you. Remember, remember that I'm not alone. Remember that, amen? Even when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now, shadow of death, somebody, is one word in the Hebrew. It's one word in the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Samuet. Samuet. That's on your outline, I think. Samuet. Samuet is the valley of the shadow of death. Huh? It is one of the valleys of life. You're going to go through that one. You will go through that one. That's one valley that everybody on the earth gets to go through. The valley of the shadow of death. Uh-huh. David says in Psalm 23, chapter 23, verse 4, David said, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. David said, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Mm -hmm. Suck of the word through. And then suck of the word you. Suck of the word through. Then suck of that word you. Because those are the two most important words in Psalms chapter 23, verse 4. Mm -hmm. The word there says, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the two key words there, through and you, two key words there, through and you, through. Know somebody that the valley is temporary. It coming out. Mm -hmm. You don't stay in the valley. Mm -hmm. You walk through the valley. Uh huh. You are not going to live your entire life in the valley. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. You're going to walk through the valley. The valley of somebody is temporary. The valley is temporary. Mm hmm. Now that's an important thing. That's very important that it's temporary. That, that feels good too, huh? Although the just man lives by faith, not feelings. But it's a sure enough good thing that it's not, it's not permanent. The valley is not permanent. Is that right? David says in Psalms 23, you're not alone. You're not going to walk through your valley alone. God is with you in the valley. So when you look at what to remember in the valley, number one, you want to put there, remember I'm not alone. Remember I'm not alone. Amen? Now you see that scripture there. It says again, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, some of it, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Mm -hmm. Circle the word shadow. That word shadow. Circle that word shadow. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, somebody, uh, this shadow is going to cross your path. Is if it hasn't already, uh huh. Um, keep living, as my mama would say. Keep living. Mm -hmm. I have lost my mother, my father, my brother, grandmama, granddaddy, aunts, uncles, cousins, in-laws. Mm -hmm. I've been at bedsides in the final moments with people. Mm -hmm. The shadow of death is going to fall across your life at some time. Uh-huh. But note this, that shadows are larger than the real thing. You ever seen a shadow? Shadow of a tree, shadow of a tree, shadow of anything. You ever seen a shadow? Are shadows bigger than the real thing? Ever notice that? Shadows are bigger, somebody, than the real thing, oftentimes. Have you ever seen a shadow of a truck that was bigger than the truck? Have you ever seen the shadow of a truck, the shadow of a truck 
that was bigger than the truck. Huh? <laughs> Shadows are many times bigger than the real thing is. Uh huh? Shadows cannot hurt you. Shadows can't hurt you. That's a good thing to know, amen? Shadows can't hurt you. Shadows can't hurt you. Have you ever been run over by the shadow of a truck before? Has a, has a shadow of a truck, shadow of a truck ever run you over? Hmm? <laughs> Is there a difference between somebody being run over by a truck and being run over by the shadow of a truck? Is there a difference? Huge difference. Huge difference, huge difference. If you're afraid of the shadow, if you are scared of the shadow, if you're afraid of the shadow of somebody, mm -hmm, then it is the fear of the shadow that bothers you. If you're afraid of the shadow, it's the fear of the shadow that bothers you. That fear is there because you're not ready to meet God. What about that? Fear is always greater I think somebody needs to know that, huh? Fear is always greater. Mm -hmm. Fear of somebody is an image without any substance. Is it not? Fear is an image. That's better than your shout. Fear is an image without any substance. Think about it. Fear is always greater, isn't it? Have you ever been afraid of something? Only to get up on what you're afraid of and see it. It's, it's like the Wizard of Oz. Huh. Have you ever been afraid of something, Mr. Oz, Mr. Wizard? Shaking and trembling. Mm -hmm. Because he's speaking and his voice is roaring. He's so loud and he's so, oh my gosh, he seems not to be even approachable. He, he, he made the lion, lion and, 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 uh, and Dorothy and, and, and the scarecrow tremble and, and shake. You know? Mm -hmm. Until, what happened? Until Toto did what? Toto ran on up there like, I don't know why y'all scared. Toto ran on up there, pulled the curtain out, and this little three, three foot two man is behind the curtain working some levels, some a machine. All of that was a big facade. A big, a big, a big show, a performance. The enemy likes to perform. Fear is always greater than what you're afraid of. <coughs> Can you hear me, somebody? Mm -hmm. Fear is always greater than what you're afraid of. What about that? Mm -hmm. Think about it. Think about it. Mm-hmm. And so, fear again is an image. Fear is an image. Fear of somebody is an image without substance. There's nothing to it. That's what a shadow is. That's what a shadow is. A shadow of somebody is an image. But you go to the shadow and there's nothing there. You can stand in the shadow. There's nothing there. The tree is not really there. The truck is not really there. Oh, wait, I'm making a shadow. Huh? You can stand in my shadow. Huh? Is that right? Mm -hmm. But know this, the most important thing to know about shadows is this. There can't be a shadow without a light. You can't have a shadow unless a light is nearby. Am I right about it? You go out, somebody go outside today and, 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 and make some shadows. Find the shadow. Hmm? The shadow of somebody in your life are evidence that huh, the presence, there's the presence of light in your life. There's light in your life. Can you hear me? If there was no shadow in your life, uh -huh, there would be no light. Mm -hmm. Because there's no light. There is no light when there's no shadow. Is that right? Shadows are a clue that there's light in your life. Can y'all hear me today? Uh-huh. And so again, again, shadows is a clue to the presence of light in your life. Mm -hmm. 
God is with you. God is with you. He is the light. Amen. The Lord is my light. Psalms 20, Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Mm -hmm. And so, so the way you deal with shadows of death, somebody, or the shadows of despair, or the shadow of, this, uh, of depression, or fear, or losing your mind, or the thought that you're losing your mind, how you deal with that is, somebody, that mm, you actually... You actually, somebody, you actually, somebody, turn your back to the shadow. You turn your back to the shadow. Can you hear me, somebody? Turn your back to the shadow. Is that right? Can you hear me? Because mm -hmm. uh, you don't need to see the shadow anymore, do you? Mm -hmm. and, and all you got to do now is look at the light. That's how you overcome. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That fear of the shadow. Look at the light. Look at the light and all of a sudden you don't see the shadow anymore. Because the light overwhelms the shadow. You go into a room. It can be pitch black. And I've experienced this. It can be pitch black. And when somebody can strike a match and it lights up, when light comes in, darkness starts running away. Does it not? Yes, it does. And so know this, know this, know this, know this, that every time somebody you get afraid, you need to look at the light. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jesus said this, it's not the outline. Jesus said this, he says, I'm the light of the world. He says, I am the light of the world. He who believes in me shall not walk in darkness. He who believes in me will not stumble in darkness. I am the light of the world. Amen? The first thing that God did when he created the universe, he said, let there be what? Light. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says, God is light in him, there is no darkness, nor shadow of turning. Amen? When you're scared of the shadow of somebody in your life, uh -huh, turn around and look at the light. You hear me? Look at the light. Are you understanding what I'm saying by that? Look at the word of God. Look at Jesus. Amen? Stop focusing on the stuff that's scaring you to death. <laughs> huh? Stop focusing on your bills. Uh huh? Now stop focusing on fears, your worries, and that stuff that's going on in your mind, what they said, what they might do, and... Huh? Turn your back to the shadow and look at the light. Huh? So when you go around them again, they'll know, well, I don't know what happened. She ain't scared. She ain't scared. <laughs> hmm? Can you hear me, somebody? Because of the light. Because of the light. Amen? And so know to somebody this, that um, get your focus, somebody, on the light. Get your focus on the Father. Amen? On Jesus. Amen? Look at the light. The shadow, somebody, cannot hurt you. It's just a shadow. It's just a shadow. Amen? And so, when you're going through a tunnel somewhere, when you're going through a tunnel, when you're going through a tunnel, how, how, do, you, how do you make it through a tunnel? You keep your eyes on the light at the end. You don't keep saying, oh, I'm in the tunnel. Oh, I'm in the tunnel. No, 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 no. That's dramatic. It's good for a movie. But in real life, you better look at the end of the tunnel to get yourself out. Amen? Can you hear me, somebody? Just look at the end of the tunnel and just keep going. Just keep going, amen? Remember that God is with you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Did he not? Amen. You know, shadows can actually frighten you a whole lot, but they can't harm you. They can't hurt you. Amen? Can you hear me, somebody? And so know this, know this. The shadows have benefits. The shadows have benefits. <clears throat> This also is not your outline, but it is Job chapter 12, verse 22. It's Job chapter 12, verse 22. Look at what this word says. It says that God uncovers deep things out of darkness. God uncovers deep things out of darkness. Mm -hmm. And he brings into light even black gloom and the shadow of death. Huh. 
What about that? What about that? Mm -hmm. And so, somebody this. God says, just remember that you're not going through by yourself. Wherever you find yourself, in the shadow of death, wherever you find yourself, you're not going through by yourself. Amen? You may not be able to see God, but he's there. Because he already said, never will I leave you nor forsake you. Never will I relax my hold on you nor leave you helpless. Amen? So when you see a shadow, guess what? Its presence shows its light there. You're in the light. Look with me. At, well, you don't have, it's not a lot of reason. Yes, it is. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. Living Bible. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2, Living Bible. Uh, it says there, when you go through deep waters, uh, uh, listen to this, when, when you go through, it didn't say if. When you go through, it's almost like my, my brother-in-law, he would say, he would come visit us, and he would say, uh, he'd be there for like a day, and the next day he would say, uh, uh, sure, uh, uh, when you go cut my banana pudding, when you going to make my banana pudding? He didn't say, are you going to make a banana pudding? He said, when? Huh? So it, it has to be sure if it's when. In other words, I know I'm going to get one, so when? This is what he says, when you go through deep waters and great trouble, uh, I will be with you. God says, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames would not consume you. Amen? And so if God is the sovereign Lord of your life, then he is your shelter. Is that right? Hmm? You remember that you're not alone. You're sheltered. You're sheltered. You have a covering. Amen? And so what, what else do you remember somebody in the valley? You remember that God has a good purpose for your valley. You remember that God has a good purpose for your valley, huh? What about that? God is good. Mm -hmm. This whole Psalm, Psalm 23, is about the goodness of God. God is good, amen? God is good, amen? It is impossible for God to do evil. God can only do good in your life. Uh-huh. I said it's impossible for God to do evil. There's no evil in him. God is good. He can only do good in your life. Amen. God has good plans for your life. Amen. Even in the problems. Uh-huh. Even in the dry places, in the valleys, in the desert, in, in arid places. Uh, in conflict, in fear, in grief. Uh-huh. Failure, whatever it is, whatever the, whatever the valley is, God is still good. Amen? God still has a good purpose for your valleys. You know the word of God says in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to those who love God. And all the call to according to his purpose. Those are not special saints. Those are believing saints, period. Amen? Those are believing saints, period. Amen? And so, and so I'm just saying here that God has a good purpose for your valley, your valley experience. Uh, whatever it is, fear, conflict, grief, failure, whatever it is, weeping. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. Romans 5, chapter 3 through 5. Mm -hmm. That word there from the English Standard Version, mm -hmm. that word says we can even rejoice in our suffering. Knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. Character produces hope, which does not disappoint. Can you hear me, somebody? Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me let me read this again. We can rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Suffering produces endurance. Suffering produces endurance. Mm hmm Endurance. Think about your life. Suffering produces endurance. Uh-huh. Endurance produces character. Mm hmm And character produces hope. Uh-huh. And that kind of hope does not disappoint. Mm hmm There are a lot of kinds of hope in the world, but 
The world's hope is false hope. Amen? The world's hope is false hope. Amen? This, the word of God here says this kind of hope does not disappoint us. Because God has poured his love into our hearts. Amen? God is building character when you're going through a valley. <laughs> I said God is building character when you're going through a valley. Mm -hmm. And that character, somebody is going to outlast everything else. God is building character when you're going through a valley. And your character will outlast any and everything else. Can you hear me, somebody? Your character, who you are when nobody's looking. Mm -hmm. Talking about your integrity level. Talking about your being honest. Mm -hmm. Walking in love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. How often you do that? Mm -hmm. Steve, Stephen Curtis Chapman, you've heard of him. Stephen Curtis Chapman, somebody has just written a new book and it's called Between Heaven and the Real World. He discusses in that book all the valleys he's been through, mm -hmm. including the loss of a child. Including the loss of a child. You know what? We're in a club that nobody wants to be a part of. And as Stephen Curtis Chapman, he said in the interview, he said, um, he said, Jesus tells us in his world that in this world, you will have trouble. Stephen Curtis Chapman said, I'm quoting him. He says, he says, take heart because I've overcome, because Jesus, take heart because I've overcome the world. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, uh, Jesus is saying here that, um, <laughs> he, he, he's saying here that, you know what? We're being told a story in the world. But Jesus says, uh uh. No, look at my story. Uh huh. Stephen Curtis Chapman says, if I didn't believe that I'd be extremely, if I didn't believe that, that God's story is the right story for me to believe, I'd be an extremely bitter, resentful person. I get that because his daughter died. Mm -hmm. He said, my little girl's death on the line and solidified what I knew and believed, but it made it more real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, when there was nothing else to hold on to, I heard myself say, God, I'm going to trust you and worship you, and it's not because there's an audience watching. I'm going to bless your name, whether you give or take. What about that? And so his, I'll just tell you the background. His daughter died from a freak accident. Uh -huh. And um, he said that he had gone 50 feet below sea level before. Mm -hmm. He thought it was dark down there. But he learned that uh, since his daughter died, he learned that God was with him. Mm -hmm. And now he said, I, I, he said, I was pushed a thousand, hundred thousand feet below sea level, below sea level, below, below sea level, where it was darker than I ever imagined when my daughter passed, he said. He said, I was pushed a hundred thousand feet below, below sea level. He said, I found the same thing was true there as well. I remember that I'm not alone, and I remember that God has a good purpose for my valley. You learn things. In suffering, amen? Hosea chapter 2, verse 15 says this. I will transform, New Living Translation says, I will transform the valley of trouble into a gateway of hope. Hosea chapter 2, verse 15, Living Translation says, I will transform the, the valley of trouble into a gateway of hope. Mm hmm What about that? The valley of trouble is actually a valley. That's another valley. Uh huh. It's the valley of Achor. A C H O R. The valley of trouble. Mm -hmm. It's covered twice in Joshua and it's covered in Hosea. You have to go through the valley of Achor too because that's the valley of trouble because God says, in this world you will have trouble. Mm -hmm. But God says, I will what? Transform the valley of trouble into a gateway of hope. You turn around what the enemy went for evil into good. Amen? Amen? What about that? And so I'm just saying here like, God's one translation says, I'm gonna turn trouble into a, into a hopeful valley. 
Look with me at Colossians 1.11. Colossians 1.11. It's not on your outline. Just write it down. The word of God there says, God will strengthen you with his own great power so that you will not give up when trouble comes, but you will be patient. Colossians 1.11, God will strengthen you with his own great power so that you will not give up when trouble comes, but you will be patient. Mm -hmm. God, is, God, somebody, is just going to give you his presence. Not just his presence, he's going to give you his power to get through. Amen? Can you hear me, somebody? He's going to give you his power to get through. Remember that you're not alone. Remember that God has a purpose, a good purpose for your life in the valley, amen, that you're in. The third thing to remember is this. Remember that the rewards will last forever. Remember the rewards will last forever. This is not the end of the story. Your being in the valley is not the end of the story, amen. You're going to be rewarded for being faithful to Christ. And I just, just, just know this too, that this earth is not the end of the story, you will be rewarded, somebody. We will be rewarded for everything we've been through in this life. We will be rewarded for somebody. We will be rewarded for our being faithful to Christ. Hmm? For, for walking through the valley of fear and walking through the valley of failure. Hmm? And walking through the valley of grief and brokenness and trouble and all the other valleys. God said, I'm going to reward you for all these. Anybody want to be rewarded? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, the word of God there says, For our present troubles are quite small. Mm hmm. That's relative to eternity, put up against eternity. Our present troubles are quite small. Put up, again, put up against eternity. Our troubles are quite small, put up against eternity. That's what we don't do in trouble. Is that right? That's what we don't do in trouble. Is that right? Put eternity up against the trouble. We never do that, do we? We just say focus on the trouble, looking at the shadow, not turning to the light. But you know what this says here? Put up against eternity. Troubles we experience here, therefore, are really quite small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our present troubles are quite small. They won't last very long. Yet they are producing in us, look at this, yet they are producing in us an eternal glory that will last forever. And it's greater than anything we can imagine. God uses trouble. Can you hear me, somebody? You won't be in heaven one minute before you go, what was I thinking about? Why was I complaining? Why was I making such a big deal about things? Why did I worry? Huh? When I was going through all those difficulties and those valleys and everything, why, why, why did I, why did I even, what, what, what was I concerned about? It was worth it all. It was worth it all. You won't be in heaven one minute. You'll say, oh my gosh, why, 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 why was I worrying? It was worth it all. Mm hmm What about that? I want to read for you here is something. Psalm 107, verses 8 through 15. I just need to get through this word today. And if you'll bear with me. Psalm chapter, uh, Psalm chapter 107, verses 8 through 15 says, Some are living in gloom and darkness, like prisoners suffering in chains. Because they had rebelled against the commands of Almighty God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And had rejected his instructions. They were worn out from hard work. Then in their trouble they called to the Lord. And he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of their gloom and darkness. And broke their chains in pieces. They now must thank the Lord for his constant love. And for the wonderful things he did for them. Until we get to heaven, we're going to face valleys. Okay? Believers have accidents, disappointments, financial problems, family issues, mental illnesses, physical illness. We all go through valleys on this earth. Mm -hmm. But here is the difference between a believer and a non-believer. For a follower of Christ, somebody, going through valleys is very different from a non-believer. Mm -hmm. Not because of the absence of the shadow, uh -huh. but because of the presence of the shepherd. Uh-huh. God says, I will be with you. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. 
Adonai. My only my controller is my shepherd. Uh -huh. uh, and so he gives us this promise of power and purpose and protection and peace. Amen. And his presence. We have a promise from God that he's always with us. That he is protecting us. He's given us his power, his presence. Amen. And so know this, I mean, regardless of the type of valley that you find yourself in, it's not going to last long. It's not going to last. It's not going to last forever. Amen? There is a way out, and you have a shepherd. Amen? But you got to decide to make Jesus your shepherd. Amen? The Lord is not your shepherd, somebody, unless you've asked him to be your shepherd. Amen? Unless you have surrendered your life to him, then the Lord is not your shepherd. Amen? And so, you know, you can't make it through the valley without the Lord. You just, I, you just, I don't want to think about trying to get through the valley without Jesus. I don't even want, I, I shudder even thinking about that. That's impossible. Impossible. Uh-huh. And so know this, somebody know this. Now, <laughs> when, when, when you give your heart to Jesus, we ask Jesus to be your shepherd, somebody. Mm -hmm. The word changes to, the Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. I have everything I need. Then he starts doing all these, I'm talking about Psalms 24. Then he starts doing all these things for you. Mm -hmm. When you when you, when you you give your heart to Jesus, you ask Jesus to be your shepherd, then it all changes. The word starts changing because it, it'll be a change in tense. How we went from verse 3 to verse 4, Verse 1, 2, 3, and now how God helps us in the good times. Okay, that's what we talked about there. He leads me, he guides me, he helps me, he meets all my needs, he makes me lie down and rest. We talked about that. He provides everything I need. It's, 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 it's third person he. Because we have a relationship with him. Amen? And now we get to the problems and then, and then, then this word switches. And now this word says, I will not fear no evil for you are with me. It's us being personal. Huh? We start talking about he, then it goes down further, then it's because we're in relationship with God, then it goes down further, it starts talking about, it starts talking about uh, uh, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou knowest my head with all my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Amen. I'm just saying, it, it, it's not third person anymore. It's not he, he, he. It's, it's I and you. I and you. Is that right? I, I'm just talking about God is not out there somewhere. God is in here. Amen, somebody? Say, so you are with me. You are with me. He's not out there. He's with me. He's in me. Amen? You will, you will protect me. Amen? You give me your power to see me through. Is that right? I, 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 I'm just saying here's some, I, I, there's one more valley. Can I talk about one more valley? Joel 3.14. Real quick. It's not on your, your outline. Let me read it to you. It says multitudes. Yes, multitudes are in the valley of decision. The valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Uh-huh. God knew that you would be here today. Listen to this word here on YouTube. Amen. God knew you would be here. I've never seen your name before, but God knew you would be here. Amen? And so this is your moment of decision today. You're in the valley of decision. Whether you will decide for God or against God. Amen? Because you know what? When you decide your life for God, everything in life is actually uh, added to you. Uh, everything else in your life is decided for you. Does that make sense? Make the wise choice. And give Jesus your life, is what I'm saying. Amen? Make the wise choice, is what I'm saying here today. Amen? And so, if you've never given your heart to Jesus, you're in the valley of decision. And God wants you to make a decision today. Can you do that? I encourage you to make a decision today because uh, you, you say, well, well, well what, what do you mean? Because God wants to know you're going to decide today to follow him. Are you going to decide to make him the manager of your life? So you're not in control anymore, but he is. And one thing I know about God being controlled is that I don't have to worry about being controlled. I love it because I don't have to worry about it. 
because he leaves me, he feeds me, he meets my needs on a daily basis because I ask him to. He's my shepherd, amen? And he leaves me when I don't even think about something. God's like, you forgot that. Oh, I did. Huh? Oh, has that been happening to you? How God's just been reminding you, protecting you, keeping you at peace no matter what. Huh? Don't have to think about folk. Oh, your mind. He said, I will keep him in perfect peace. His mind is stayed on me. And uh, to the word, the word somebody is so true. The word works. Amen. I'm just saying today, somebody, that you need a good shepherd in your life. Because we're considered, believers are considered, considered sheep. Believers in Jesus are considered sheep. Mm -hmm. And sheep are dumb animals. She would just, a sheep would just keep walking and walk off, walk off a cliff. Whoop, whoop, and fall to his or death. Okay? Unless the shepherd goes and puts that rod around his neck and pulls him back in. Huh? That's what Jesus says I want to do with you. I want to do for you. I want to put my rod around your neck because your neck represents your will. I want to put my rod around your neck and pull you into safety. Pull you into safety. You've been in an unsafe place. You've been in an unsafe place. But Jesus, let me pull you into safety. Amen? Give your heart to Jesus this day. Make Jesus the manager of your life. Say this prayer out loud. Believe it with your heart. Amen? Believe it with your heart. You may say it with about Jesus. I'm a sinner and I need you, Jesus. Come into my heart. Live in me. Help me to live for you. It's just that easy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Know somebody that valleys will happen. Valleys will happen. But you don't have to stay in a valley. But you need to know what the valleys are. Amen. You need to turn from the shadow to the light. Walk in the light always. Amen. And be protected and safe. Let's stand. Amen. And say a prayer together. Amen. Please pray this prayer with me today. Amen. Let's just pray this prayer. Let's say, Father God. Father God. Help me to remember. Help me to remember. That you have a good purpose. That you have a good purpose. For my life. For even the bad things, the bad, the bad things, things, that, happen the things that happen in my life, you turn them around, you turn them around and, you and you use them for good. Jesus, Jesus I'm asking you to be my good shepherd. I take my hands off the wheel of my life. I ask you to sit in the driver's seat. Be the director and the manager of my life from this day forward. I thank you, God. God, you're not just the God of the mountains. You're the God of the valleys. You're the God of my valleys. And I honor you. Help me to love you for the rest of my life. In your name, Jesus, I pray this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We've just concluded that word, the valley experience. Amen. I pray this word, Facebook Live, falls a good ground in you, and it's not stolen by Ravella, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen? And I pray that you will actually join us on Thursday, Lord willing. Thursday, Lord willing, amen? If it doesn't change, Thursday, Lord willing, amen? For a Bible study about the 7.30 time frame. If it changes, I'll put a, a notice out there on Facebook Live. But 7.30 time frame for you. We'll be here at 7 as we're going to go in a... In prayer and and and, and uh, song first, amen. But uh, you can always join us seven thirty ish on Thursday, amen. And also note this also that next Sunday, next Sunday we will not have services here at Sonic Ministry Christian Center. So don't look for a broadcast from us next Sunday. But please feel free to go to uh, the YouTube channel at Cheryl Curry S H E R Y L C U R R Y. C-U-R-R-Y, Cheryl Curry, C-U-R-R-Y, amen? And uh, subscribe there, and you get, I think it's 335 words there. Uh, but this word will be included, this word will be included, amen? And so, and all the Bible study words are included also, so you can learn and grow, amen? And come to know Jesus, amen, better than you have before, amen? Amen. Thank you for joining us this day. Pray you're blessed. Share this word with somebody you love and know.
Have a great week. We love you dearly. Be blessed. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus.